Hey everyone, welcome back to another throwback video here on Dark Sank. I am Dark, and today we're going to be doing task six. Let's get offensive. So this task is all about PowerShell. If you are familiar with PowerShell, you can probably click through this. However, we're going to go over some of the basic commands that you're going to want to know in order to get more information from the throwback domain as we get a little bit further into it. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in with the PowerShell overview. PowerShell is the Windows scripting language and shell environment that is built into the .NET framework. This also allows PowerShell to execute .NET functions directly from its shell. Most PowerShell commands, called commandlets, are written in .NET. Unlike other scripting languages and shell environments, the output of these commandlets and objects, uh, making PowerShell somewhat object-oriented, uh, so they are objects rather, um, and you can use that to your advantage. PowerShell is very, very powerful. And anyone in here who has had domain admin experience will know this because this is how you end up scripting out a lot of the tasks. So for instance, building out like a new user profile and things like that, it can all be done via PowerShell. This also means that running commandlets allows you to perform actions on the output object. So you can take things and pass it into other for, uh, functions. Uh, this is like using the pipe in bash which makes it convenient to pass output from one commandlet to another. The normal format of a commandlet is represented by the verb dash noun. Uh, for example, the commandlet to list commands is the get dash command. So you can see we have the verb and then we have our noun. So what we want to do with it. Uh, some common verbs. Uh, we have get, uh, which is typically going to produce some output. Start, stop, you can use these for services. Read, write, new, out, you can guess what those are for the most part. And even then, we're going to dig into some examples. Introduction to PowerShell Basics. Now that we've understood how commandlets work, let's explore how to use them. The main thing to remember here is that the get-command and get-help are your best friends. This you will be using a ton. Get-help, and we're going to go over it right now uh, because it is just that useful. Using get-help. Get dash help displays information about a commandlet. To get help about a particular commandlet, run the following. So get dash help and then the command name. So you just use the function there, or the uh, second um, PowerShell command that you want to have. You can also understand how exactly to use the commands by passing in the dash examples flag. This would return output like the following. So you can see that we have the get dash help, and this is going to be a little small, and then get uh, dash command, and then the dash examples flag at the end of it, and it gives us an example. This essentially ends up being a man page, uh, which is very similar for those of you who have used Linux. This is, you're going to feel right at home here. And even then, if you haven't used PowerShell, I do recommend switching over to it because it's better than the command prompt in Windows by a lot. <laughs> Unless you're using the new one, even then you should still be using PowerShell. Uh, using get dash command, get dash command gets all the commandlets installed on the current device. The great thing about this commandlet is that it allows for pattern matching like the following. So get dash command verb dash star or uh, star dash noun. Uh, and that way we can use star to get anything uh, in that uh, pattern. Um, so if you have a general idea of what you're going to do or if you need a specific command, you kind of think you know what it is you can use this uh, sort of matching pattern to find what you need. Running the get dash command uh, new dash star to view all the commandlets for the verb new displays the following. And you can see we have an example output here where you can, again, find commands that you might be looking for. Object manipulation. In the previous task, we saw how the output of every commandlet is an object. If we want to actually manipulate the object, we need to figure out a few things. We need to figure out passing uh, output from other commandlets to uh, commandlets and then using specific object commandlets to extract information. So here we can see that we have the pipe coming back in from bash. The pipeline, uh, which is just this vertical bar, is used to pass output from one commandlet to another. A major difference compared to other shells is that instead of passing text or string to the command after the pipe, PowerShell passes an object to the next commandlet. Like every object in the object-oriented frameworks, or programming languages, an object will contain methods and uh, properties. So think of this as like a physical folder. You can put a bunch of different things in there. You can have pieces of paper that have data on them. Uh, you could shove other things in the folder. It, it's essentially just a collection of things, and you can identify those using different um, methods. Very convenient because it bundles everything together for us. 
You can think of methods as functions that can be applied to output from the commandlet, and you can think of properties as variables in the out, uh, output from a commandlet. <coughs> to view these details, pass the output from a commandlet to the get member commandlet. Uh, so you can see that we have this example here where the, uh, the pipeline is in the middle, and we can see if we want to get dash command and then pipe it into get dash member and then finding uh, different information about that, you can see that we can take the information or the output of one command and pipe it into another. And you can see that example here. From the above, or from the above flag in the command, you can see that you can also select between methods and properties. Uh, and there's a lot more that you can do going into this. Again, we're going to talk about the big items that you need. Creating objects from the previous commandlets. One way of manipulating objects is pulling out the properties from the output of a commandlet and creating a new object. This is done using the select object commandlet. Here's an example of listing the directories and just selecting the mode and the name. So here we can see we have the get child item, which is going to list all of the directories in your current directory. And then uh, of course you can change this a little bit and then piping it into getting the mode and then the name. So the mode is going to be, is it a directory? What properties do we have in there? It's going to be very similar to using the chmod command or uh, ls rather in Linux. And we have the, uh, the actual mode here and then the name. You can also use the following flags in or to select particular information. Um, and you can see some examples here. We have first, uh, which gets the first object and then last unique uh, which is going to be the same as unique in Linux. Um, and then we have skip, which is going to skip the first amount of uh, whatever objects you apply that to, or whatever count you have for that. Filtering objects. When retrieving output objects, you may want to select objects that match a very specific value. You could do this using the where dash object. Uh, this is the same as using the where uh, verb in SQL. So just to give you an idea, it's the same concept to filter based on the value of properties. The general format is using the uh, using this commandlet is so we have our actual commandlet here and then we have where dash object and then we have our actual uh, what we want to match on here at the end. So you can see how this goes here at the end where we have the property, the property name and then the actual value here. The second version uses the dollar sign underscore operator to iterate through every object pass to the where dash object commandlet. The where uh, where the uh, dash operator is a list of the following operators. So we have contains and if any item in the property value is an exact match for the specified value or we have EQ which is as you would assume the same so equals uh, GT is going to be greater than as well. So you can see how we can use these going back to here to start matching on specific things that we want. And then you can see that we have a full reference link there. And it, here's an example of checking these stop processes. So we can see get dash service gets all the services running on the system. And then we can see we've selected using the where dash object with a property of status and then equals to stopped. And we can get all the processes that have stopped on the system. Sorting objects. So sort object. When a commandlet outputs a lot of information, you may need to sort it in uh, to extract the information more efficiently. You do this by pipelining the output of a commandlet to the sort dash object commandlet. So here we can see that it's just piping that into the sort dash object and it'll sort it for you. Perfect. And you can see that very, very easy. We can specify different things to sort on here. But this is just a nice example of how you can go through. And in this case, it's listing everything alphabetically. Now that we understand the basics of PowerShell, we can get to offensively, uh, offensively using PowerShell to enumerate and exploit. Introduction to offensive PowerShell. This is actually the meat and potatoes of the section. And just so you see, we have a little bit more to do, but these are all pretty quick because we're going to see what we have. Uh, it, this is just getting domain information. Well, we have all this information, now how can we apply it to attacking the Windows network? We can utilize Offensive PowerShell to enumerate and attack Windows and Windows Active Directory. So basic Offensive PowerShell, um, and we're going to go into these here. A majority of Offensive PowerShell will come from using modules like Active Directory and PowerView to enumerate and exploit. However, PowerShell also has a few commandlets that you can use to your, uh, use offensively rather. 
using modules in PowerShell. PowerShell has the ability to import modules such as Active Directory and PowerView to expand the list of commandlets available. To import a module, you can use either the import dash module and then the module name, or you can use the dot space dot uh, backslash method so you can see we're dot sourcing to load a module from the current directory. So here we can see the examples down there below. So note the uh, dot sourcing will only work with PowerShell script files. All other modules will need to be imported with the import dash module command. For example, with Active Directory, uh, we can only use the import dash module command with that. Get80 domain. Get80 domain is a commandlet that pulls a large majority of the information about the domain you're attacking. It can list all of the domain controllers for a given environment, tell you the NetBIOS domain name, the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name, so the entire domain name, and much more. Using the select-object command, we can filter out some of the unnecessary objects that may be displayed, so like containers, uh, group policy objects, and much more. And here we can see we have a basic uh, bit of information where we're using the get80 domain command, and then we're piping it in here to select the NetBIOS name, the DNS root, and then the infrastructure master Git80 forest. Git-80 forest is another commandlet that allows or that pulls all of the domains within a forest and lists them out to the user. This may be useful if a bidirectional trust, so if you have multiple companies in the picture or multiple uh, domains in the picture, uh, and it may allow you to gain a foothold in another domain on the LAN. Just like Git80 domain, there's a lot of output, so we will be using select-object to trim the output down. And here you can see that we have a nice little example of this where we're selecting just the domains and we can see all of the domains here. Git-80trust. So Git-80trust is the last built-in PowerShell commandlet that we will be discussing. After this, we will move over to PowerView. Git-80trust provides a lot or a ton of information about the trust within the Active Directory domain. It can tell you if it's one way or a bidirectional trust, who the source of the trust is, who the target of the trust is, and much more. And again, this is information about how two domains are sharing information. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, but we're going to get to that later on in the throwback course where we talk about abusing these trusts. One required field is the dash filter, and this is required in the event that you want to filter on a specific domain slash trust. If you do not, like in most circumstances, you can simply provide the wildcard, so the star or asterisk, to wildcard the results. And here we can see an example of that where we are getting information about the trust. So we can see that we've got a little bit of information returned in the output. Introduction to PowerView. PowerView, part of PowerSploit by PowerShell Mafia, is an excellent suite of tools that can be used for enumeration and exploitation of an AD domain. Today we're going to cover PowerView's ability to enumerate information about the domain and their associated trusts. And you can get the PS1 that we're going to be using here at this link. And this just goes to their GitHub page, which is having trouble loading. But you can grab it from there. It's something that I do recommend having on your Kali box. It is absolutely a lifesaver to have, and it's very useful in a pen test. So the first commandlet in that, git-net domain. Git-net domain is similar to the Active Directory's uh, git ad domain module, but contains a lot less information, which can be a lot better for us. So this is basic information such as the forest, domain controllers, and domain name uh, that it's going to return. And this is better for us as because it's more filtered. It gives us just the information that we want and not a ton more. Git net domain controller. So git net domain controller is another useful commandlet that will uh, uh, list all of the domain controllers within the network. This is useful for initial reconnaissance, especially if you do not have a Windows device that's joined to the domain. This can be really useful as exposed AD ports can get you a lot of information. So very, very useful. Git-net forest. Git-net forest is similar to Git AD forest and provides similar output. It provides all the associated domains, the root domain, as well as the domain controllers for the root domain. And here we can see that we have that information returned below. Git-net domain trust. Git-net domain trust is the last module that we're gonna talk about here. It's similar to get 80 trust with our select object filter applied to it. So it's just short, it's sweet, you don't have that uh, filter that's a required field. It, it's already tacked on for you. And it gives you that information already. 
Otherwise, we'll go ahead and mark that as complete, and I will see you next time when we move on to task 7, which is entering the breach.